Hi everybody! I'm actually in Wyoming today. I've told you guys this before, but I really can't travel by myself anymore. And so um, I'll catch you up to date later, but I have come to Wyoming with a friend and am staying at with them and their family for a while. And it's just really lovely. And I'll tell you more about that later. I've been traveling with my friend Sue Ann. Today I am presenting to you a video of my next to last stop in Texas at a campground and there this is amazing. I hope you enjoy the way I lay out this story for you. I, I It's so much that I had to type it and I'm going to be reading from time to time but it, it, it's it's I this was just amazing to me. So um, I've got to put on my glasses because there's a glare out here. It's a beautiful day but my friend and I uh, Sue Ann, we left Abilene and we continued our trek west and thanks to my friends Brian and Cindy, I, I knew that Sue Ann and I could stay overnight at the McDonald's in Van Horn. Uh, Brian and Cindy and I had stayed there on our way to Texas so I kind of felt like I had come full circle since now I was on my way out of Texas. Um, this overnight parking area is also listed on freecampsites.net and on the All Stays Camp and Tent app that I use on my phone if you want to find it plus check out the description and I'll have more information there in fact all of the things that I'm fixing to share with you the links and everything are in the description and before I go on I just want to give a shout out to my new subscribers my channel is growing and I'm so excited about that I I just I appreciate each and every one of you thank you so much I, I'm just really thrilled that you're here I hope you enjoy this this video and, and this journey it's it's I think it's a fun one okay so Van Horn Texas it has a population that hovers around 2,000 and it's also where a great guy I know Larry he's from there he grew up there and Larry is the father-in-law to my BFF and trustee Leslie and so Sarah and Leah sweethearts I love you and this next clip is so that you can see where your pops grew up enjoy So while in Van Horn, I took the opportunity to downsize some more and got rid of my big propane tank. I, I now exclusively use the small green bottles for convenience and for storage space. And also I don't need to run the heater as much since I have all of my wonderful insulation and the, and the custom built-ins. So I, I'm all set and, and went to, uh, and, and found a propane place in Van Horn. Um, they weren't open though, so I left the tank near the front door with a little message on it. The people in Van Horn, they're really friendly and, and were just wonderful to me. In fact, I asked some questions while at the laundromat about, um, from the, and the patrons there even offered to drive me to, for me to follow them if I wanted to, uh, because I needed a car wash and the propane place and a couple of other things. But it turns out all those places are on the same strip, so it wasn't any problem. But I had to crack up at this hotel sign that was across the street from the laundromat. I ran over and got a picture of it for you guys. 
I especially like the one bed, one person sign and the free Merco. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Did you guys see that on there? There is no telling how old that sign is. And I also wonder what that first free line item was that got crossed off. Times have changed so very quickly in our country. That sign isn't that old in the grand scheme of things. So Sue Ann went on to our next camping ground ahead of me while I finished my errands. And I got to tell you, I loved, loved, loved my leisurely drive. It was such fun for me and the dogs. It was pretty much our first open road tour in my new and improved Fancy Free. And the dogs and I were in heaven. About 15 miles north of Van Horn, I'm rambling down the road, meandering, taking my time, when I look over to the left and I see what I swear are ancient cliff dwellings. I did a U-turn and I got went back to get a clip to share with you guys. Oh my gosh, is it just me or does that look like cliff dwellings up there? Can you guys see what I'm talking about? Wow, that really activated my imagination. Then I drive just a few miles more and I see the strangest thing. I have no idea what it is. Okay, that's really weird. I have no idea what that might be. Some sort of salt deposit or something and there is a tower or something on the hill above that. And we're out in the middle of nowhere. So, very fascinating. A couple of miles further down the road, I see the road uh, down the road I'm traveling on. I see the road that leads to that uh, that tower or launch pad or whatever it was and a salt deposit looking area. But, but here's the road that leads up to it. So here is the road that leads up to that salt deposit or whatever that is and that tower that's up on top of the hill. See that? Some sort of landing pad or something. I can't really tell. But the sign doesn't explain it. I just love the things you find on the road. The next thing I can run across is just a typical West Texas ranch. Um, but something was odd to me about it. Keep in mind that I am in the middle of nowhere. Approximately 150 miles east of El Paso in the Sierra Diablo, which is Spanish for uh, Devil's Mountain Range. And I'm about 25 miles north of Van Horn at this point. But there has been no improvements or structures until now. Just open land and skies. And this bit of road is it just caught my attention. So here's a typical ranch out in the middle of nowhere and the sign says that there's a historical marker for it in one mile. So we'll stop and see what's up here. Okay, did you notice the silo in that? Here's a close-up picture for you. Now I was really curious to make it to that historical marker and see what's up for this area. Okay, figure two ranch. Well, the name was certainly different, but it wasn't very revealing about anything. So I began reading the placard and I'll share the highlights with you. Here's some of what I read. The lands which now lie within the boundaries of the figure two ranch were occupied in the 19th century by nomadic Native American tribes. So I thought the first thing that came to my mind was, aha, maybe those cliffs were used at one time as dwellings. And then I continued reading, one of the last battles between Texas Rangers and Apache Indians occurred in the mountains west of this site in 1881. I don't know about you, but that made me profoundly sad and immediately reverent for this land. James Monroe Darty, 1850 to 1942, purchased this ranch in 1900. He was from Denton. Well, there you go, another similar commonality for me in this place because I graduated college at the University of North Texas in Denton, Texas. So, it says, though, in 1933, he sold the Figure 2 Ranch to legendary millionaire businessman James Marion West Sr. out of Houston. And uh, James West lived from 1871 to 1941. So, okay, that's a very prominent family in, in Texas history, and all of that was very interesting. But what caught my attention was the very last sentence. The property remained in his family until 1992. The end. That's where the, the, the historical marker cuts off. So I drove on and I'm driving down the road and I'm thinking 1992, 
Well, then who the heck has owned it for the last 25 years? So I drove on, but I couldn't shake the effect that this sacred land had on me. And just driving by it, 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 impa it had impacted me greatly. I, I don't know how to describe the pull it had on me. So I pulled over to, uh, the first chance I got, and I started Googling whatever I could find about the figure two F2 ranch. And the, one of the first things I found is this picture of these cowboys on this ranch. Um, the picture was taken in 1906 to 1909, and it was provided by uh, the Clark Hotel Museum to the Portal to Texas History. And that's a digital repository hosted by the UNT Libraries at my alma mater. So that was kind of fun. But it is in contrast to what I found out that is going on on the ranch today. Some of the links I used for my research are in the video description, like I said, but this next statement was the first thing that jumped out at me. It's a doozy. And it's from the Midland Reporter Telegram, a division of New York City Hearst Communication. And um, it was published first in the Houston Chronicle by Dane Schiller in 2013. And I share that with you just so you know that this is credible. It's not just something thrown out there on the internet. So here you go. Here's what I found out. Origin is using the wide open skies here to develop a spacecraft. The, the, the idea is to one day offer safe, affordable commercial travel to everyday people. Can you believe that? That may have been a launch pad that I saw. So I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. So it wasn't just my imagination running away with me. It goes on to say that the new owner is also reportedly putting up $42 million, $42 million for a 10,000 year clock project, reportedly being built beneath the silo with plans one day to open it to the public. So there you go. That, that silo I knew was kind of interesting. I don't know if that's the silo with the clock or not, but I thought it was fascinating. So I, I sat there after reading all this and I was in awe. What a wonderful maiden voyage for me and my fur babies. But you want to know the kicker? Can you guess who the current owner is? Okay, I'll quit teasing, but a drum roll please. His name? Jeff Bezos. Do you know who that is? Who is that? the founder of Amazon. So there you go. You never know what you're going to find on the road out in the middle of nowhere. Blew me away. We'll see you down the road, everybody. Am I, is my foot showing up? Okay. <laughs> too loud.